Hi guys, Laika here to help you make some cash. <laughs> I'm gonna present you a couple of ideas, things that work for me or believe have lots of potential and are on my to-do list too, as well as give you some pros and cons. We'll get into it right away, but before I have some disclaimers for you. First, no matter what any YouTube gurus may tell you, not everything works for everybody. However, if something doesn't work for you right now, maybe it's gonna be your prime income source later once you figure things out or when you have a bigger following on social media. Try stuff out and don't be afraid to experiment. And second, I doubt this, that any of these things are like a magic button you can press to make it rain cash. That would be nice, <laughs> wouldn't it? But uh, we want to be realistic and I'm going to tell you about things that honestly work for me or once again that I believe are great things to try and things that I'm planning to do as well. So now that we've got that out of, out of the way, <laughs> let's hop right into it. First, we're gonna start with something that worked really well for me and helped me pay my bills. Uh, back then, when I first started out, before I went MIA for two years. And um, back then, I had maybe 300 followers on Instagram. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, less than 500 <laughs> for sure. Keep in mind, this one is one of those things that can be hit or miss and something that's not going to work for everybody, I'll be honest. And now, after my two-year hiatus, a lot of my client base from back then isn't really active anymore and I'm struggling with this as well right now, which is a blessing in disguise, but that's a story for another time. But yeah, back then, once again, it, yeah, it, it worked wonders for me. So, what is this mysterious miracle thing I did? Well, as some of you may or may not know, I sold adoptables. In fact, this bust I'm, I'm uh, working on that you see here um, is also an adoptable design up for sale on my DeviantArt account. Links below or somewhere in this video if I managed to, to link it. Let's, let's start with what the heck actually is an adoptable. An adoptable design can be pretty much everything an artist designed for other people to purchase and use. I've seen weapons, outfits, animals, I don't know, food. <laughs> but the most popular designs out there are uh, character designs. People can buy a character design from you and it's now their character they can use for whatever. Mostly artists, including me, sell adoptables for personal use only meaning like people use them for DD games role play and, and, and stuff like that but you can also offer commercial use so that your client is allowed to sell merchandise and use that character design to pretty much make profit and usually those designs cost extra so yeah i sold mine on deviantart and deviantart was amazing for that for me personally because DeviantArt has a ton of groups with tons of members. Like there are groups out there that have like 50,000 members and more. And uh, you can post your designs into those groups and not only will you then grow on that platform, but um, obviously your clients will find you more, more easily if, if you put yourself out there. And those groups were amazing to promote yourself, or are amazing to promote yourself. Full disclosure, for the couple of months I was active there two years ago, I sold almost every adoptable I put online and that was amazing. Like, I love creating character designs and being able to auction them off. Man, <laughs> that dopamine kick was insane and it helped me out a lot back then because, yeah, um, my financial situation wasn't that great <laughs> back then. Um, yeah, so it, it was it was really, it was amazing. Wait, didn't I say before there is no magic button? Is this the magic button after all? Honestly, back then, for me, it kind of was, but, and that's a big juicy but <laughs> right there, 
I believe I was kind of lucky and I posted in the right groups at the right time. The adoptable niche is super oversaturated. I'm not gonna lie. Having a certain skill set and create character designs that stand out definitely helps. However, um, I believe and, and I actually see that happening. You don't have to be a professional. You don't have to have a certain skill level or following. Um, you can still try selling adoptables. And I'm proof that it worked because I'm not a professional. Um, my skills are okay and back then they were also okay but nothing too outstanding, you know. And once again, no following whatsoever. Very A very small following and it still worked for me. So, that was great. But notice how I use past tense. <laughs> As I mentioned, I wasn't active for um, two plus years and lots of my former clients and supporters aren't really active anymore. And if you're being honest, you also lose credibility when you just leave for that long. And I feel like I have to start from scratch on DeviantArt now. Although, what's going on on the platform recently? <coughs> AI art. <laughs> I'm not really sure I want to stay on the platform for much longer but um, yeah I made the mistake of putting all my eggs in one basket so 90% of my clients are on DeviantArt or were on DeviantArt so pro tip don't do that use multiple platforms so if one kicks the bucket you're not totally stranded like I am now yay <laughs> If you guys are interested in that whole adoptable thingy, let me know. I'll gladly make a video about how this works, pricing, how to sell them, how to post in groups, what to avoid, and so on and so forth. Because I believe I do have experience and without tooting my own horn, I was pretty successful back then as a teeny tiny artist. So I think I can give you guys some insight if you're interested in this. But for now... Um, I have uh, more about this on my Patreon, Shameless Self-Promotion. Fingers crossed, I'll make it work again. <laughs> I'll keep you updated. But to sum this up and go to the pros and cons, um, trying to sell adoptables is a great option if you're into character design and if you enjoy it as much as I do. And um, another big pro is if you're lucky and or skilled enough and you're getting noticed, you can earn a lot and quick. I mean, that's amazing. You can make hundreds of dollars from selling one adoptable design if you auction it off for a lot of money and many people happen to want this design. Um, and you don't have to have a big following for that. So, I mean, that's incredible, right? Um, another big pro, other than commissions, you create what you want to create, the work is already done, and if people want it, they buy it, period. You don't have the same amount of pressure like you do with commissions. So, those are the pros, but here are the cons. This is not a reliable income source when you don't have a big following and a client base where you can say for sure, okay, those people are gonna want this design 100%. And uh, yeah, we are not established artists just yet and this is what this video is about and um, so yeah it is absolutely not a reliable income source sometimes you have to get lucky to sell something and once again the adoptable market is super oversaturated and it is difficult to get noticed when you're a newcomer regardless of your skill level i'd say and another DeviantArt exclusive con is that there are AI-generated adoptable designs around. And uh, yeah, <laughs> not cool. We kind of sort of have to compete with that bullshit. Uh, these designs, unfortunately, they look good and they're being sold for like five bucks. So yeah, <laughs> that's also something to maybe keep in mind. Let's move on. Commission. Yeah, I think this one is pretty self-explanatory, I'd say. What I absolutely don't recommend is underpricing yourself as an artist, because we shouldn't have to undercut each other, you know. That whole pricing thing is another topic, uh, and I'm not gonna cover this in this video, otherwise we're gonna sit here until tomorrow, and we don't want that. 
So let's hop right into my pros and cons when it comes to commissions. The pros are, unlike adoptables, you know that if somebody commissions you, you're getting paid for your work. You don't have to get lucky to sell something. I mean, you have to get lucky maybe to sell a commission, but once you are commissioned, you're getting paid, right? And um, with adoptable designs, it's the other way around. You put in the work first and then when you're lucky, somebody buys it. <laughs> this is what I meant. I hope this makes sense. And uh, yeah, the cons are having an audience and at least some followers definitely does help and arguably is necessary sometimes. And you gotta market yourself a lot. And that's not a con, that's a fact. You can't just sit there and wait for clients to find you. You have to put yourself out there. Let people know you're open for commissions. Post on different platforms. Make sure your info is easily accessible because most potential clients aren't going to waste any time looking for your commission info. And this could be a deal breaker. So really, you got to put yourself out there. If you're a teeny tiny small artist like I am, try using different platforms and make sure your info is available when you're open for commission. The next one, um, yeah online shops <laughs> and i'm not just talking about selling physical products like stickers uh, and prints and so on but there are also digital goods and i'm sure some of you have heard of this already but you can actually build passive income streams by offering uh, offering digital goods for download i am slowly building mine up on etsy and on etsy there are a gazillion niches I'm just gonna cover the digital goods now because we are broke teeny tiny small artists and you're trying not to spend too much money on production costs just yet. If you're into graphic design, you should definitely check out some niches on Etsy like weddings, birthdays, uh, bridal showers. There are so many options and yeah, just saying, printing out table numbers for a wedding yourself is so much cheaper than ordering them. So you have many people wanting to buy those things um, and if you enjoy creating greeting cards and designing calendars and you know stuff like that this is definitely something you should look into if you're more like me and that's not really your vibe like birthdays and weddings and all of that stuff and you want to focus your shop more around your artwork you have options like selling clip arts, coloring pages, brushes. Artists are always looking for cool brushes to use and this is definitely something I want to get into soon. You can also sell your sticker designs as digital goods for people to print out themselves. So yeah, really, this is, this is a big one. And um, this, by the way, is definitely not a magic button. Uh, I'm so tired of YouTube gurus praising passive income streams. Woo! Yeah, that's so great and amazing. Yeah, of course they are, once they're actually making passive income for you. But that doesn't happen overnight. And that's the big con right there. You gotta put in the work first and then hope for sales. If it happens immediately for you, then congratulations. But that's not a given. Still, I absolutely recommend you getting started with building passive income streams ASAP because they're super important when you want to make art your job. And that is the big pro. They are amazing and can become a pretty reliable income source for you. And the second pro is since we're broke teeny tiny artists, for now, <laughs> we don't have to spend a dime on production and shipping costs. So you can get started immediately with this one. The next idea I've got are art fairs or artist alley uh, on conventions. I tried those and full disclosure, I wasn't very successful. <laughs> My merchandise was terrible. I did it all myself and that was a big mistake. And it wasn't until I sold commissions for a fair price, because, yeah, I was definitely guilty of severely underpricing myself. Um, and only then, once I started offering my commissions for a fair price, 
I, I, I made some okay profit at uh, conventions and okay profit is maybe even a bit of an overstatement. Anyway, let's hop right into the pros and cons uh, and here are the pros and the pros are huge, okay? And the first one is promotion. If you watched my first YouTube video, you already know that building an audience is incredibly important and in my humble opinion, finding clients in your area and actually meeting them in person is amazing. You're not just some stranger on the internet, you get to talk to your clients, they get to talk to you and that way you're building an entirely different level of trust. They get to see the art behind the, the artist. No, wait, the other way around. They get to see the artist behind the art in real life. And yeah, that, that's just amazing. That's great. And the second pro, you get to connect with other artists as well. That way you can exchange tips and tricks, find new friends even, get inspired, be inspired and support each other. And that's what really helped me out a lot back then. And that's also what makes me want to give artist Alice another whirl <laughs> soon because yeah obviously during my two-year hiatus I didn't attend any artist alleys and unfortunately I did fall out of touch with so many incredible creators and uh, yeah if you're one of them listening by the way please say hi <laughs> I'd love to reconnect <laughs> and yeah that by the way is such a big pro and for that alone trust me it's worth it in my opinion to try artist alleys another pro is the experience and fun you will definitely have <laughs> you're not only a guest uh, at let's say comic con but you're part of the program you're part of the convention and i don't know it has these vip vibes and you get a glimpse behind the scenes, you get to be there way earlier, you might meet celebrities. It's, yeah, it's just amazing. It's a lot of fun. You get to connect with so many amazing people. And if you haven't tried it, please, please, please do if you can, if you can afford it. So that being said, we gotta cover the cons as well. <laughs> and the biggest one, of course, is, yeah, the, it's expensive. Depending on the convention, your booth can be yeah very expensive and there is no guarantee that you'll make profit or even break even even break even is, is that did i say that right <laughs> my first experiences were mm, meh i was lucky i always broke even and even made a tiny bit of profit but if you factor in the effort that went into the preparation well, if you see it from a business and strictly business perspective, it wasn't worth it at all. And yeah, you should have merchandise like stickers, prints, keychains, pins. There are tons of options for you and a lot of those things you can actually make yourself. That's what I did and I regret it deeply <laughs> because I was pulling all nighters, printing and cutting out stickers by hand. Yeah. <laughs> fun times you can also sell just commissions um, if that's the route you want to go which can absolutely work but you know not everyone wants to spend 50 100 and more dollars euros whatever on commissions most people just want a cute sticker or a cute put uh, button or maybe a print and yeah that, that, that's it and um, if you do these things yourself if you create your or if you produce your merchandise yourself there is, of course, also cost uh, involved, but the main thing here is all the effort and work that go into production. And I already said that I did pull all night nighters before the convention. And um, mm, I don't know. I mean, this is totally up to you. You can also order the, the merchandise you want online from a print shop. And since I don't have the space to um, get the equipment nor the time, or I don't want to spend the time making all of this my own anymore, I'll definitely order my merchandise next time, at least a big portion of it, which of course costs money. <laughs> but those cons aside, which can be pretty much summed up with it's expensive and you gotta put in the work, maybe even travel, I still absolutely recommend going to Artist Alice if you can afford it. 
just for the experience and meeting and connecting with your fellow artists and clients and just having an awesome amazing time okay um, i think this video is getting a bit long so uh, yeah let's 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 sum this let's sum this up um keep in mind yeah that's super important for me to mention those are just some ideas and there are so many possibilities for you do not give up if something doesn't work for you now try something else or try it later or try a different approach when you're a teeny tiny small artist like i am you gotta be flexible and open to experiment and uh, yeah i'll probably make another video about this topic once i'm further ahead in my journey and i can give you more insight but i hope this still inspired some of you fellow teeny tiny artists <laughs> and please always remember the big players out there the artists you're looking up to and admire they also started out somewhere and were in the exact same spot we are now so don't compare yourself don't be frustrated you're not there yet their success didn't happen overnight either they worked hard for it and if we do that as well we can also achieve such success it may take months it may take years who knows but it's gonna happen if you keep putting in the work so give yourself a pat on the back be proud of how far you've come and keep it up <laughs> i'm rooting for you now i'll let you go <laughs> thank you so much for watching you can find me on instagram on tumblr deviantart patreon twitch even though Twitch right now is on mini hiatus because I have no equipment currently, but I'm posting updates on Instagram when I plan my next um, Twitch stream and all links are below. If you want to say hi, please say hi. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I'm going to see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.